Well guys, welcome back and in today's episode, as you can see, we are back in the Disco 3 and we have got a lot to talk about. So it has been 13 days since our last MOT attempt, uh, which you saw if you looked at the previous episode. Uh, and. We did fail that MOT, uh, we knew we would, but uh, we weren't quite sure on how many different things we would fail it on. Um, if you need to just have a quick recap, um, I'll put a link above just so you can check out that episode and you can see what we failed on. But essentially, it is all done. Um, it wasn't a huge, that's a lie. It was a big job, it was a big job. We had to do both lower control arms at the front. They were the major, um, major things that were required. Uh, one had failed on the bushes and another one had failed um, on a track rod end, had a uh, split gator, so nothing major, but it was just a lot easier and the cost of those parts is fairly minimal. Um, it's worth doing the replacement as a whole. So we've got two brand new lower control arms on the front and I can say that the handling is a lot better. We also had tracking done at the same time, which did add to the cost, but it has made a big improvement. I'm now driving with a straight steering wheel. So other little details, now on the original, uh, MOT we failed for an airbag light which was actually a loose wire um, so give them credit uh, it hadn't come up with me but obviously when they moved the seat it came so I've repaired that wire uh, and that's all fine and um, we had a problem with emissions now the emissions were the fun part because we'd failed um, on the tires and they weren't legal I couldn't drive the vehicle until I had new tires fitted um, and the trouble was I couldn't get the tires I wanted quickly so essentially we had to come up with a solution that would enable us to lower our emissions quickly and easily and for that I went back to my old friends at Forte and I put some diesel emission reducer uh, additive into the tank and blow me down she passed with flying colors, went straight through. So that was without doing any driving, because don't forget this vehicle's been stood for a very long time uh, and there's a lot of carbon buildup. I've just been driving around town, it's not had a proper clear out yet. So there was bound to be some, uh, some carbon deposits there that needed sorting. But anyway, that's sorted. So that, that additive, and if you're interested, it's not a fix, don't get me wrong, but it does reduce the emissions. So if you've got a plan like we have, which I'll tell you about in a moment, uh, to constantly or, or permanently reduce uh, our emissions and get that problem sorted out. Um, the diesel emissions reducer is a really good product to get you through your MOT and now we can focus on getting those emissions down naturally um, permanently uh, with the fix that we're going to talk about in a little bit and uh, do in a future episode. So with that done uh, we're pretty much clear. Now tyres we didn't go for a full set of tyres just at the moment because we want to make sure again that we get the little issue sorted on the vehicle. So we fitted some part one um, they're good brands actually to be fair I think they're Cooper and Goodyear so we've got some good tyres all terrains they all match uh, they've got very similar treads so we're down about six mil all around um, so they were fitted now because I was feeling a little bit ropey after Covid and I just didn't really want to take on that job of doing the lower control arms myself um, I took it to a garage and the garage that uh, did the work also did the MOT so it was just easy just to give them everything. I was going to pick the vehicle up and get the tyres fitted but they did that as well um, so they did everything so Jenny um, Motors locally to me here in Liverpool in Speak did a fantastic job they knew what they were doing I got an idea of price before they did the job and they obviously do a lot of these vehicles so they had a good idea um, luckily I think there had actually uh, been replacement lower control arms on the vehicle already so everything came off without having to be cut um, so all the bolts came out and, and that made the job a lot easier uh, the issue they had when they put everything back together again was the tracking and if you remember going back again a couple of episodes we did talk about the fact that the uh, the limp mode that came on board with this vehicle all the time was because the steering alignment was massively out so we've done the tires we've done the lower control arms uh, we fixed the ABS light we fixed the emissions with the Forte emission reducer and uh, yeah so we now have a clean bill of health we do have an MOT we're now fully legal we have a full year's MOT and we don't have any advisory so we're all good to go um, really pleased um, but now sit back and enjoy some of the other jobs that I've taken on over the last few uh, days on the Discovery 3 and just see what a massive difference it's made 
Okay, so this is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time, and that's to discover whether or not we've got a regulator ready pre-wired into the door. The only way really to know for sure is if we take the door card off. If we've got a regulator in there, what I'm gonna to have to do is try and free up this glass inside these channels, because it's not moved for 15 years. At the moment, there's a little tiny bit of movement I can see. Up and, yeah, so we have got some movement on there. So it shouldn't be stuck if it works. I'm gonna go for this one first. It's got a little cover on there, which is attached, that's good. Give me two clips to release under here. There we go. Didn't break anything, that's good. Everything's still intact. Ugh. That's one in there. Another one. So there's two screws on each side. So if you're looking to take your door panel off, second row, you've got one screw in there, two this side, two this side, and you've also got two at the bottom here. Okay, so working from the top was actually quite nice because I've got one out, then I can see the next one so I can get the, uh, the some leverage right on it. And there's some at the bottom as well. There we go. Well, the excellent news is we do indeed have a regulator. So they did fit a regulator. Now this is the cable that's not connected. So I wonder if we just simply connect that, we're gonna get some power. And that looks like it actually goes to the regulator. Slide it in the groove and up. Can it be that simple? I've reconnected that wire. I'm convinced this is going to work. And it doesn't. <laughs> oh no! Just check I haven't got it on. I think I had it unlocked off. Let's try again. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> check it out. Fully functioning rear windows. How cool is that? Literally, plug it in, done. So chuffed, I'm so chuffed. Same again on this side. We'll start at the top. There's a clip there that's out. Another one. Here we go. Looking for our, our wayward wire. <sighs> Nothing going on there, so it could be our switch. Could have taken a knock. Okay, so I'm gonna eliminate the switch now by taking it off the other side quickly. Now, it's unlikely that uh, there's a fuse gone. I don't think there'd be a fuse independently for this rear door. So I should be able to just plug this in here. No. What a shame. I'm not getting any sort of feel of, of a click from the motor. Absolutely nothing. Hmm, it's always worth checking. So come down here. 20 amp fuse, rear left window, location 31. Okay, I can see it. Not gonna believe this, but can you see that? That is blown. Can we be that lucky? <gasps> yes! There you go. Oh my goodness me. I really didn't think there'd be a fuse just for that window, but there was. Brilliant, I'm so glad I had a look. Now, while we're in the cockpit area, um, I just thought I'd mention as well that I have replaced this um, unit here. Now, I bought this off eBay, the whole unit for 19 quid, um, which is about $23. Um, basically, I had a hunch because when I was running the vehicle, <coughs> My lights weren't coming on, so you can just see here. Probably should do this at night time, but you'll see. There, lights on now. Basically, the reason I replaced this is I had an idea, because I didn't have any illumination in my binnacle, I had an idea it might be this resistor here because it was flashing on, it would come on and then it would just suddenly disappear completely. So I think that 
switch resistor inside there had blown and I was right because replace that straight away all my instruments light up and uh, we've got illumination so yeah really pleased that's another little job uh, done so we're slowly getting there with the little tiny jobs well guys we're still at it and we're still trying to clean up the uh, discovery it's getting close i mean bearing in mind this vehicle hasn't had an exterior clean yet so i haven't apart from literally just giving it a quick rinse uh, it's not having any detail work on the outside so we're going to do a little bit of that today just to try out a couple of products um, and i also want to get the interior panels cleaned up and fitted back in just to sort of try and finish off the interior so i've got myself some uh meguiar's carpet and interior cleaner also got a little meguiar brush um, that uh, seems to be quite useful. Now, I definitely don't expect the interior to look immaculate, but you can see what I'm working with here. And uh, I'm just trying to rein in the spend a little bit on the vehicle, because we are getting up there. And uh, it's never going to be a show pony. It's only ever really going to be um, a utility vehicle um, that can take five people, seven people in comfort. Um, but it's never going to look gorgeous. And I like that because I can just throw camping gear in there, what are bikes, whatever, and I'm not gonna be stressing out about it being ruined, but I do want it cleaner than this, so let's see what we can do. What do you think? It's the same panel. I mean, it's pretty good. That is pretty good. That's got rid of most of it, yeah. Before, after, not bad. All right, let's go for the other side. We're in. Okay. Much better. You know, when you've done one, it's a lot easier, definitely. Now, YouTube is full of great ideas to restore your plastics to black. And uh, who knows which ones work and which ones don't. The heat gun method is probably worth looking at, but next to a windscreen and, and things like that, I'm, I'm just not gonna risk it. So I did the cheapest thing possible. I went on to Timu and bought some plastic exterior restorer for £2.36. I'm gonna see if it works. Um, just to save you the trouble if it doesn't, if it does, that is a bargain. So all we have to do is spray some onto a dry cloth. I've done this side, I haven't done that side. Squirts on there. Just rubbing it in. It's not paint, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. That is just whatever chemical this is here. So whether it's a ceramic, but that is looking like new. This is gray, this is very faded. So, well folks, the Death Star is now fully operational. That's a little tiny bit of a lie because we do still have one tiny nagging issue. Uh, and that is when we're driving on the motorway at constant speed under heavy load. So if we're doing between sort of 65 and 75 and we're constantly on the throttle, eventually, it kicks into limp mode. Now we think that is because we do have a problem with the high pressure fuel pump. So that is something we're gonna to have to address. We're gonna try and give it a little bit more time with those injector cleaners, a little bit more running, just to see if that's gonna make an impact. But it seems fairly obvious that there is an issue with fuel delivery to the rail. And uh, that seems a bit of a shame. One job we're gonna do uh, in the next episode, uh, which will come out next week, we hope, is uh, we're gonna be doing a full EGR removal and EGR blanking kit with a rematch. Uh, and that is to again try and address our emissions issue, our smoking issue, and it will give us a good indication when we take those EGR valves off just to see how much carbon buildup there is in the engine. I want to get kind of like a guide on the health of the engine, and I think that's a good way to do it. So, what do we think? Uh, this is uh, not the end, I guess, this is the end of the preliminary 
build of this vehicle, but it's the beginning of what we do with the vehicle now. As you can see, I've fitted uh, some roof bars and I've put the roof tent off my pickup onto the back here, uh, which I'm really excited to use. I'm gonna be taking the family out this weekend and hopefully we're all gonna get in there and, and have a great weekend camping. Even if it rains, I don't care. It's been that long since I've been out camping with the family, uh, I can't wait. Um, I actually fitted genuine roof bars and um, they were relatively expensive. So I think something around the 250 pound mark. Um, I didn't want to fit aftermarket ones. I just wasn't that comfortable putting a 1500 pound roof tent on some 70 quid roof bars. It just, for some reason, I was just uncomfortable with it. I wanted to make sure that I fitted genuine because if there was any comeback, you know, I've done my due diligence and fitted it properly. And I'm pleased to say they went on a treat. I do like the way that the actual roof rails uh, allow the roof bars to slide forward and backwards. I think that's a really nice, uh, touch it's a shame you can't position them exactly where you want they have to sort of like predetermined where you can have those roof bars but really cosmetically the vehicle has been transformed and i think you can agree with uh, having just watched the video the detail we did on the interior cleaning all the plastics up and getting that tidied up um, the one pound 69 i think it was um, plastic restorer that we used from timu i mean I couldn't ask for any more for that sort of money. It's really good. The only bit that hasn't worked, uh, which I'm disappointed about because I got super excited when I first saw it, but this piece here has not reacted very well to that stuff, so I'm gonna have to paint this. Uh, but all the actual plastics on the vehicle, so the wheel arches, the bumpers, the wing mirrors, they've all come up really well, and they've stayed like, overnight, I've left it, they haven't faded. Um, so for that small amount of money, that's a really good investment. So I might be looking at some other products as well um, that do a similar job and um, seeing where we can go with that, but I just think it's tidied up the vehicle, no end. And the fact that we can now use those uh, second row windows, I was so pleased to see that that was the case. There's more people viewing the Disco 3 video than any of the other videos on here on YouTube. You guys are liking it more, you're commenting more. So please, come on, give us some feedback. Give me some ideas of what to do to the vehicle. Because at the end of the day, this is what I do for a living and I'm doing it for you guys. So you tell me what you want to see on the Disco 3 within reason. Um, obviously with the roof tent, there's a good chance that I'm going to be starting to play around with the load space in the back uh, for more camping trips, getting ready for next year. Obviously with the end of our summer now here in the UK, we've got the winter coming up. Uh, I don't see us going abroad in the vehicle this year, but next year, obviously when March comes, we want to be ready. So we've got the winter time to get the vehicle prepared for camping. Um, so we might want to do some stuff on the interior with storage, um, some refrigeration, maybe uh, a split power pack, portable power pack maybe. I've done those in the past, they're really popular. Um, and maybe some more protection. I quite fancy getting some uh, a uh, front uh, steering guard on here, um, but I haven't decided which one to go for yet. So if there's anything, as I said, you wanna see, please do drop me some comments below. So that's it for this episode. I uh, really hope you're enjoying the transformation of the D3 or the LR3, we certainly are. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna subscribe, that'd be great. It really helps the channel. But for now, uh, enjoy your weekend, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.